madness, defined as the state of having serious mental illness, dementia, mania, hysteria, schizophrenia, lunacy, psychosis, frenzy. We understand what madness encompasses, but how does that become physical? What makes the curious madness or different? What makes it mad? How can a set of armor or weapons possess madness? On the channel recently, we have been investigating the strange and peculiar materials which have been used in the creation of fantastical armor all throughout the Elder Scrolls universe. Magical ice, insect shells, crystallized god's blood infused with daedric essence, glass, bone, the list goes on. Recently, we delved into the curious case of amber armor and weapons, made by a master smith in the town of New Sheoth in the Shivering Isles on the mania side called Bliss. Well, there is another side to the city of New Sheoth, the side that rests firmly in the domain of the other psychotic extreme, and that side is called Crucible, representing dementia. It is within Crucible that we shall uncover the nature of this peculiar madness ore. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, and today we are investigating and finding out what we can about madness, armor, and weapons from the Shivering Isles DLC for Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. This video has been popularly requested by you guys, so we have answered your call. And if you have any further requests of investigation, Fudge Muppet is happy to be on the case, so let us know in the comments below about any armor or material that you would like to see a video on. Also, links to all our previous armor and weapon videos are in the description below, but without further ado, let's get into it. Within these dank, dark, and depressing streets of Crucible lies a shop called Cutter's Weapons, owned by the Bosma Smith named Cutter. Cutter is the antithesis to our friend Dumag, the orcish smith of Amber on the other side of town called Bliss. Before we start hypothesizing, let's have Cutter introduce herself. They call me Cutter. For a truly inspired blade, I can forge madness ore. Here. Hold on to this parchment. It lists what I need. Spirits of ancient souls are trapped in the ore. Find it in old ruins. Also, Grumites are especially attracted to it. It's a supple and flexible ore, yet it holds a good edge. I can shape the sharpest of blades from it. I can also create magical items. Tradition dictates before each master smith dies. She hides these magical molds in the world, like pouring salt into a wound. Over time, they soak in magical energies from the world around them, like you suck blood from a cut. Bring me a matrix and enough ore, and I will forge you a new item and bleed the magic of the matrix into it. So Cutter is the master smith of madness ore, which, according to her, is an ore with the spirits of ancient souls trapped inside. That seems rather vague, but perhaps we can speculate a bit and try to make some sense of it. Here's a theory. If you watched our video on Daedric Armor, you would know that it is simply ebony that has been corrupted, twisted, and defiled by the infusing of a Daedra into the weapon. These Daedric weapons are said to contain echoes of the prolonged suffering of the Daedra used in its creation. So my thinking is that it is similar to this, but the reverse. Let me explain. Daedric weapons and armor are made by binding a Daedra to a material from the world of Nern, whereas madness weapons and armor are made by binding a mortal soul from Nern to a material, and ore specifically, from a Daedric realm in Oblivion. The Shivering Isles has been the recipient of insane mortals for thousands of years. It could be that those spirits of ancient souls could be the many absolutely insane mortals that have died or been trapped in the Shivering Isles, and their souls are then bound to the ore, whether by another individual, Sheogorath, or perhaps it is simply the nature of the Isles to do so. But that leads to the creation of Madness Ore, and by extension, the armor and weapons made from the ore would eternally possess the echoes of the ancient insane mortals who were bound to it, giving it its madness characteristic. So where Daedric gear possesses echoes of the Daedra's suffering, Madness gear retains echoes of the ancient's maddened mind. 
It could also be the actual Ancient Soul is trapped in there, but Carter says the spirit of Ancient Souls, which makes me think like essence or echo of the Ancient Soul. However, she could easily mean just Ancient Souls. Regardless, it is very safe to say that it is the soul of the Ancient Insane that give the Madness awe and by extension the Madness armor and weapons their unique form. Whether that be because they retain echoes of their madness or they directly contain their maddened souls. Its unique and crazy design, by the way, is one of my favorites. When you retrieve enough of the Madness Ore, you can have Cutter Smith for you a Madness Cuirass, Helmet, Gauntlets, Greaves, Boots, and a Shield, which I have to say is absolutely awesome looking. It would probably have to be one of my favorite shield designs ever. The armor is the stuff of nightmares and the weapons too. A madness bow, arrows, axe, claymore, and longsword all can be made for you by this particularly odd smith who seems a little far too obsessed with blood. All of this stuff at the perfect quality is better than the Daedric armor and weapons of the base game. But say you didn't have the right level for the perfect set, so you need more madness or to have cut a craft you a better leveled set. Well, where are you going to find all that good stuff? In our Amber investigation video, we found that Gnarls usually possess Amber and they are the go-to kills for that material. But Cutter mentioned that Grumites are especially attracted to this strange material. I wonder why this is. Let's see what we can understand about Grumites and perhaps that will provide some clarity on the topic. Grumites are these primitive frog-like creatures that inhabit the Shivering Isles, both the Mania and Dementia sides. To explain Grumites, the book From Frog to Man by Mikus Ralbrek is the best to read. The life cycle of the Grumite is rather unique. They appear to be a deviant version of frogs and may even be distantly related to Argonians, although I have no direct evidence of that. Like the humble frog, the Grumite is born from eggs found in or near water. The eggs hatch into tiny polywogs, no bigger than my hand. The polywog grows quickly and inside a few weeks grows limbs and changes into an amphibious ballywog. The ballywog will live for up to two years, growing to be larger than a man in both length and weight. Eventually, the adult ballywog will feel the urge to seek out deep water and bury itself in the mud. It hibernates there for many months, gestating into a grumite. I have been unable to determine the exact time of gestation. The grumite emerges from the mud fully grown. New Grumites never leave the water and are consumed with the urge to mate. Females leave the water to hang their eggs. They are hung over the water to keep them out of reach of aquatic predators, while still allowing the polywogs to fall into the water when they hatch. Once a female has laid her eggs, she turns her back on them. She will live her life more on land than in water, although never far from it. The male's mating urges subside after six months to a year. He takes to the land and, like the female, does nothing to protect his eggs. Adult Grumites have a sort of primitive culture. Craft and Highbrow maintains that they are cunning craftsmen that make jewelry and weapons, even mining ore. This is plainly ridiculous, although I have not determined the source of their tools and adornments. I am certain they trade with other civilized races for such things. As for the tales of magic casting Grumites, that is even more ludicrous. While their primitive brains are surprisingly large, they clearly do not have the intelligence to learn the arcane crafts. I do not know how Crafton managed to train his pet Grumite to cast spells, but I assure all my readers that it is a trick of some sort. While the author Mikus seems to provide a somewhat accurate insight for the majority of the Grumite's life cycle, it seems that he has some kind of bias against the creatures, constantly downplaying their intelligence and doubting their small achievements. For example, he calls the idea that Grumites are craftsmen and make jewelry, weapons, and even mine ore ridiculous. The evidence that we find in the games, however, is that they likely do mine ore as they are commonly seen in caves with madness ore deposits, as well as directly possessing the ore themselves. In addition, their weapons do not seem to be possessed by any other culture or nearby civilization, leading me to believe that they make them themselves. Anyways, what's interesting is their particular fascination with madness ore. Grumite weapons don't seem to be made of the stuff considering their weapons damage ratings don't match the madness weapons. So if they don't smith the stuff, which is likely since Cutter seems to be the only person who knows how, then why do they mine and collect the stuff? 
Unfortunately, it's anyone's guess, but perhaps Grumites are sensitive to the calls of the ancient souls or the echoes that exist within the ore, causing them to have some kind of reverent or spiritual attraction to the material. What do you guys think? Give me your best Grumite theories. Compared to some of the other materials we've investigated, Madness Ore has the least concrete information. Really, the only things that we can know for sure is that the Grumites like it, and it has the spirits of ancient souls trapped inside, which itself can be interpreted in different ways. Anything else is just us connecting dots and conjecture. But who doesn't love a little bit of theorizing? I hope you guys have learned something new in this video and perhaps now you have more information so you can create your own theories about the nature of Madness Ore and also why Grumites are so fascinated by it. Thanks so much for watching guys, like the video if you enjoy some good Elder Scrolls lore, subscribe for more deep dives into the Elder Scrolls world. My name is Scott from Fudge Muppet, thanks again and I'll be back to nerd out with you again next time.